Hi everyone, this is Saptashi here and today we are going to first discuss what is semi-supervised learning and secondly we will also explore a simple SVM based strategy to implement semi-supervised learning. So let's first understand that what is the application scenario. Let's say we are working on a classification problem and the use case is really simple. So you have 100 observations but out of them only 30 observation has the class information available. Okay, so this is the label data. Rest 70, you don't have the class information or it is unlabeled data. Okay, and of course you yearn for more data for your model, right? So you somehow want to explore that can I use this level information of this 30 observation and propagate to the rest 70. So semi-supervised learning actually tries to uh, explore this philosophy. One more question that can come to your mind is that does it happen in real world? Yes, it happens. So let's say you are working on a classification problem. So you want to classify an X-ray image in certain classes, right? So the hospital has got maybe tons of X-ray images, thousands of X-ray images. But for labeling those X-ray images, actually a radiologist or a doctor painstakingly spend their time and manually label them. Okay, and you can understand that that cannot be done for all the X-ray images. So if somehow I can use this label information, what, what is being labeled by them to the rest of the X-ray images, of course, that will be a good thing to have. So if you look at this pictorially, okay, so, you know, let's say you only have two attributes, attribute one and attribute two, which you have plotted along X, well, axis and Y axis. Now the ones that are colored, right, these blue triangles are one class and these orange circles are class two. And there are several observations which are grayed out diamonds, right? So these are your unlabeled set. So this is the semi-supervised scenario, uh, you know, explained pictorially. Now, in a semi-supervised strategy, we are going to take few steps. So your first step is that you build a classifier on the level data. So these 30 observations that you have, you build a classifier on that. Then you use this for prediction on the 70 observations that are unleveled. Okay. And you merely not only predict the class level, but you are also interested at the confidence level. So you are not going to randomly add all the data back, right? So you are going to see uh, how confident you are on your prediction. Now, in step three, you want to add those con con observation to the training data from this unlabeled set on which you are confident. How to measure how you are confident? So this is a design parameter, right? So if you put a very high level of confidence, what will happen is that the observation that are already there in this training data or level data, you will pick up those data which are very similar, okay, to these, these observations. So as a result, you are really not learning much. So this is one of the flip sides of having a very high confidence. Okay. On the second side, if you put the confidence very low, then of course your predictions may not be correct. The levels may be noisy, right? And if you add that back to your training data, of course, the uh, classifier will not work well. Okay. So this is a trade-off you will have to do. And now when your data set is augmented, you again train uh, your model on this data and use it for production and any downstream application as you want. Okay. Uh, just to contrast with the original data that was there in training and the ones that you have added back, the original data are called as label data. And these data that you are adding back is called as pseudo label data. Okay. This is just for the terminology. All right. So once I have applied semi-supervised learning, maybe my data will change like this, okay? So you have now less number of grayed out uh, diamonds, okay? You, you could uh, some with some confidence understand that these blue diamonds are actually belonging to this blue triangle class. So these are pseudo level class one and these two actually belong to this orange circle. So this is pseudo level class two. And still there are some unlabeled on which we are not confident. So this is the scenario 
now we want to go back or now we want to train on model 2. Okay. Now let's look at the implementation. So we'll start by importing our libraries and data sets, right? Uh, usual pandas, numpy, uh, train test fleet, uh, your SVM, data sets and so on and so forth. So we are going to uh, work on wine data. So this is a, a data about different classes of wine and there are different, uh, you know, parameters like alcohol content and etc. about this wine. Okay. So if I use this data sets dot load wine method, uh, all our input features will be collected in X and uh, the class information is collected in Y. Now, please understand that this data doesn't have any unlabeled set available, right? So for all this data, Y is there. So, so now the question comes that how do I actually get this unlabeled data? So we are going to do a simulation experiment. What we are going to do is we are going to split the data into three parts. One will be one will be treated as the labeled part, which you'll use for training. Another the unlabeled part where the label information you are not going to use. And thirdly, you will have the test data. Okay, so if I run this, so I will run train test split two times because train test split by default splits the data into two uh, shapes or two portions. And if I look at the shape of all this, so you see this has got 37 observation and uh, 13 columns, right? Uh, this is the training data. Testing data has got 54 observations and 87 observations are unlabeled. So what is your motivation? Somehow you want to train your model on, on some portion of these 87 observations on which you are confident. That's the idea. All right. So what we are going to do is we are going to train on this label set. So if I run this with a support, the kernel is taken as linear and uh, you have taken the C value as one, you are getting a classification accuracy of 92.59. And uh, this probability equal to true is important because as I said that we are not interested only at the level, but we are also going to look at the confidence and this probability by which the classifier is predicting will give us a fair idea about the confidence. Okay. So now let's do something on the unlabeled data. So instead of this predict uh, function directly, we are looking at the predict probability and we will also take the predict, okay? So this predict probability uh, actually gives you class specific probabilities, okay? So we'll just explore that when we add that in a data frame and it will be hopefully clear to you. So now we are creating a data frame. So this predict probability actually will return. So if you want to quickly take a look, you will see that how this CLP is, right? So it is an ND array and each of the row has got three elements. Why three elements? because wine has got three classes. So as many classes are there, that many uh, elements will be there in this ND array. Okay. And now, how can we say that you are confident of this prediction? So for that, what we are going to do is, we are going to look at the maximum value of these three probabilities, right? So uh, let me run this, create this data frame and look at uh, the data frame. Okay, so this will look like this, right? So as many observations are there, so 87 observations where they are in unlabeled. So for each one of them, class specific probabilities are enumerated. And then we are also looking at the maximum value of that. So can you tell me that, uh, you know, if I am looking for more confident prediction, uh, you know, what will be the relation with this max value? Of course, it will be very high. So as example, this one, when the maximum probability is 0.77, we are more confident on the prediction than when we have something like 0.47. Okay. So this concept we are going to use for this confidence. Now what we are going to do is we are going to plot the confidence. Okay. Across this observation. So we have used a histogram. So the confidence is comes uh, somewhere maybe just below 0.40, maybe 0.38 or so. So here we are totally confused, right? Uh, because, you know, if the three classes are equally probable, the maximum probability will be 0 0.33. So those are not there. And finally, you know, it ends somewhere around 0 0.78. Okay. So uh, that is the highest probability by which the uh, classifier has made the prediction. 
On the next step, what we are going to do is we are going to choose the right confidence level. Okay, so how we'll choose that? So what we are going to do is we are going to run a loop with different uh, value of this confidence level. Okay, and what we are going to do is we are going to see that where uh, when I'm adding this observation uh, observations back, okay, where while I'm adding this uh, uh, observations back, where uh, my uh, performance is getting better. Okay, so that is what I'm going to, going to look at. Okay, so what we are going to do over here is we are going to look at the confidence uh, confidence indexes, right? For those observations where the confidence is greater than 0.35, next time it will be 0.38 and so on and so forth. Okay, and for each time I run the loop and what I'm doing is, so this is the important part, I'm adding these observations back to my training set. Okay, this is my new training set where I'm adding these new observations on which I'm confident. And please look at, we are uh, we are using this uh, label information. So we are not using the class label from the unlevel data, right? Because that information is not available to us. So we are using it from the prediction and then we are training our, you know, support vector classifier and putting this in an array. Okay, so this we are doing in an iteration. So next, so this will take a little bit of time because you can understand that the SVM will run for maybe 15, 20 times. I think precisely 22 times it, it will run. And now let's plot this. Let's plot our uh, data. Okay. So unlevel we have the we have the classification accuracy around 92.5 percent. And when you are at a confidence level of maybe 0.45. Okay, so or 0.42, there is an increase in the classification accuracy of 0.94%. So you are not taking, see, please understand, you are not taking any advanced uh, no, classification tuning algorithm. What you are doing is you are just adding back some observation from this unlabeled data. And it can improve your classification accuracy. So you can also quickly look at the, the value of this uh, accuracies, okay. So it is clear from this, but let's still look at this. Okay, so, you know, you started with 0 0.9259, okay, and then, so this will be 0 0.35, 0 0.38, 0 0.41. So once you are at 0 0.44, 0 0.47, and uh, 0 0.50, 0 0.53, you are getting around 2% additional classification accuracy, but then this saturates, right? So that's what we are telling. So after that, what is happening is you are adding only those observations, right? You are adding only those observations which has uh, more confidence or more similar to the data already there in the training set, okay? So that's all for today's uh, video tutorial. I hope I could make you understand where you can apply semi-supervised learning and how you can use a support vector machine for applying the semi-supervised learning strategy also, please do understand that you can use any classifier which will give you this predict probabilities. Thanks guys for watching this video and if you have liked it, please subscribe to our channel. Please give your comments and likes generously. Thank you so much guys.